Hey there, I'm Jill Griffin, and this is the Career Refresh Podcast. Hey, everybody. I am answering listener questions this week, and they are about shifting mindset and how to shift it when you are still in it. And when I mean it, I mean the circumstance, the situation, the workplace, the conflict. So in summary, today's episode is about how do you release negative thinking about your colleagues in your workplace when you're still there. So the first listener email is from a woman named Kelly. She hasn't shared a lot of detail, which is great because I'm not going to go into her level of detail, even if she did share it, but she said I could use her name. So hi, Kelly. She wanted to know how to work with a colleague when there's been a ton of conflict and tension. And she's wondering if she should go to HR because she's finding this particular situation very distracting. In her email, she didn't give much detail, but she said that she sees this person regularly and that she's really uncomfortable every time she has to see this colleague and that there's resentment around what happened. She wants to get past this situation. She wants to release her anger and resentment so that she can focus on the work because she's afraid it's going to start impacting her work and then she's going to be on, you know, in trouble or in a performance review. So Kelly, first... I'm sorry you had this experience. When you are in a situation that sometimes can feel like a pressure cooker and all day and there is tension and conflict and you still have to work with people, I get it. It can be really hard. So I want to summarize the three questions that I heard from your email is one, does this warrant going to HR? Two, should you go to HR? And three, how to get back to work when the conflict is a distraction and it's impacting your work. So let's talk about your first and second questions first about it being an HR issue and should you actually go to HR? So I'm going to talk about the list of reasons, but HR is not standard across the board. Some organizations, HR is a trusted ally. And in other organizations, HR is neither human nor a resource. And I know most of you have probably worked in organizations that are both, right? Both trusted solid allies and both kind of, what are they here? They're not here to protect me, right? It's unfortunate. It's a branding issue in addition to an impact issue, but I don't work in HR. So I welcome my HR friends to reach out and respond as to what they're doing as an industry or as organizations to increase the Um, the trustedness and the workability and the cooperation within HR. So we know that HR is there to protect the company and the employee, but only you can decide if going to HR is right. What you say to HR, there is always a chance of retaliation and you have to feel comfortable with whatever you're putting out there. It's semi-confidential, but it's not going to be totally confidential because it's on the record. So if you do feel retaliation from this coworker, from this conflict, if you actually go to HR, you want to definitely make sure you like list that concern and make sure HR knows that that is a weight that you feel and as part of this conversation. Okay. So now here are the times when you should go to HR. If you've witnessed an illegal act, If you feel unsafe, whether this is physical, personal, or emotional safety, if you feel unsafe, that's definitely a time to go to HR. If you are the victim of discrimination, harassment, or assault, and conflict resolution is what they are known for and good at. So if you're having a hard time performing because of this conflict. So again, I don't know all the details of your situation. I cannot give you advice as to whether or not you should go to HR. So find a mentor, a coach, a therapist, find someone, a friend who you can talk through the pros and cons and get clear if you want to go to HR and also get clear in the result that you want to create by going. Okay. And lastly, remember, whatever you say is going to be put through maybe some filter, but it's not confidential. All right. So the third part of your question was around how to release the anger, the resentment, the distraction that you feel for this colleague so that you can get back to working effectively. So here are a couple of steps that I have found to be super effective in releasing some of the anger and resentment or that tension and conflict. The first is you have to process the emotion. You can do this with, again, with a trusted friend, a coach, a therapist, a spiritual leader. But the first step is you have to feel the sensation of the anger, the resentment, the conflict, and get, get clear 
and where you feel it in your body. And here's what I mean by that. Is your stomach in knots? Are your shoulders kind of glued to your ears? Do you find that there's a knot in your throat and it's hard to swallow? If you're thinking about this at night, do you find that it's hard to fall asleep or you feel like a headache or maybe you're even grinding your teeth, right? Where is this showing up in your body? And what happens when we experience really big emotions is that we find that the body is needing to be tapped into to release the sensation, right? So you're having a thought that's creating a sensation in your body that we label as a feeling, right? When we have a thought, and in this case, it's like an anger-based or a negative-based thought, frankly, any negative thought, it's going to send a slew of hormones rushing through your body. So you have a thought, prefrontal cortex, right? You know, your forehead area, primitive brain back. It's like, oh my God, that's the thought. I need to protect. I need to figure this out, right? Something's wrong. There's a natural negative bias. I got to fix this. That thought then is going to send all of those sensations into your body. So when you're feeling anger, resentment, or stressed, your body releases hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, and this causes physical symptoms like the stomach ache, the the tightness in the chest, the headache. It also increases your heart rate, increases sweating. It can create an upset stomach. I mean, again, everybody's going to have a different experience here. But why I want to talk about this is because if you are not releasing the stress that's in your body, right? It's fight, flight, freeze, fawn. If you are not releasing the stress in your body, the zebra got away from the lion and then it shakes it off. Our bodies are meant to experience stress, get through it, and get through the other side. But today we're working in environments, and I would say probably for the last 50 or 100 years, right? We're working in environments in which where the stressor used to be maybe once a week or once a month, again, I I don't know, and uh, I'm not an anthropologist (laughs) or an evolutionary biologist, but now we're feeling that level of stress sometimes multiple times a day. And when you're feeling that stress, while your heart rate increases, right? Because it's really feeling like it's got to run and your lungs increase capacity for breathing because you feel like, again, you're going to have to run and get away from the danger. All secondary systems in our bodies shut down. So digestion, reproductive, endocrine, all the additional systems shut down. So if you're experiencing stress 10 more times a day, you're constantly in this position in which you're having this stress cycle, right? So Really making sure that you give your step area of your body. I always feel my stress like in my like my heart area and then into my throat. I get like a big knot in my throat. And when I give it a little attention, sometimes if I'm in a place where it feels right, I might put my hand on my throat or I might put my hand on my chest and just give it a little bit of attention, right? Really get curious. Okay, notice the sensation that's in my body. It might increase it's going to eventually decrease. I promise you that. But if you continue to focus on the sensation, you're eventually you're going to feel a shift. The shift can be anywhere from 90 seconds. Again, it might come up again because you're still thinking about it, but it's going to release. So the first thing that I want you to do is when you have this experience and this sensation, I don't know if you're working on premise. I don't know if you're still working at home or if there's some sort of hybrid environment, but Can you pause? Can you shut your camera? Can you walk away? Can you get to the bathroom stall and just have a moment to process the feeling that you're experiencing? Because it's impossible to be in the intensity of the feeling and also be thinking as to what to do about it, right? So I want to put that out there as just noticing the impact and processing the emotion that you're experiencing. So the third part of this was also how to be free of this situation so that you can get back to work because it's a distraction. And you said that every time you see this coworker, you feel resentment and anger, that you're feeling like a little bit of an obsessive thinking because you think you keep thinking about the conflict. And then what is natural that we do is that I'm responding to what I think you're thinking versus what's actually happening. So now I'm showing up in a way that feels like it is either weird or adding to additional conflict. That coworker is wondering why you're acting that way. I mean, they might know because you had a conflict, right? But like, we can't read each other's minds. So we can only respond to the facts, not necessarily what someone's thinking. So while there was a conflict in this moment, if you're in a meeting with them, I'm going to guess that there isn't an active conflict. The active conflict is actually in your brain. So 
this is what happens. And I just want to say like, it is very common. And of course, if you are feeling this level of anger or resentment or feeling like the obsessive thinking, yeah, welcome to being human, Kelly. I mean, this is what happens and it would make sense that you would feel this way. Our minds can sometimes become, you know, we're ruminating and we're thinking about the same thought over and over. So here's what I'm going to recommend you do. And it's a little bit controversial. When you feel a conflict with someone or you feel that level of like negative thinking about them, there was a time where I was so afraid of a senior male boss early on in my career that I couldn't even walk past his office because fear that he would threaten me again. And yes, it was a physical threatening, <laughs> good times, um, but I couldn't even walk past. So when that obsessive thinking starts to set in, it's like we keep p- picking up that thought. We can't move forward. So if I'm dreading seeing someone in a meeting, the workplace, a family party, a networking event, And maybe if I'm even not going to see them, but it feels the intensity that I might see them, I have to get towards compassion. And listen, friends, compassion is empathy with action. I mean, that's my definition. So empathy is nice alone, but it doesn't move us forward. Compassion does. So you ready? Kelly, I want you to spend a few minutes every day wishing everything you want in your life, and I want you to wish it for this coworker. I know you are like, what WTF, that you are thinking this is crazy. But I am telling you, this works. Send them success, health, money, community, powerful relationships. Here's what that looks like. So every day, either say it aloud if it feels comfortable and you're you're in private or say it in your head if you have to. Today, and I'm just going to insert a name here. Today, I wish Michelle love, success, health, money, community, powerful relationships, wonderful vacations, prosperity, happiness. I wish her wild success. I wish her a promotion. I wish her gobs of money, right? You get it? I want you to do this every day for at least two weeks. And no, you're not going to mean it because you're like, Jill, what are you crazy? I don't mean this. No, no, no. I know. I know you don't. But if you keep doing this, here's what's happening. You're not free. Because you're still in this re-sentiment, this re-feeling, the resentment, re-sentiment. You, this situation is owning you and it's going to be hard for you to be creative and get focused on your work and like nail it when you're feeling this level of anger, resentment. I don't, you didn't use the word bitterness, but from the way you wrote your note, that's what I was getting from you. So again, when you real, when this is happening and realizing that As you're repeating what you want for yourself and wishing the same thing for them, and you're doing it over and over, first, you may have to ask for the willingness to do this, and it's going to come. But in time, you will realize that where you used to feel worry, resentment, you're going to start to feel peace, calm, compassion. I mean it. I know it. I don't know exactly the details of the situation, but I think many of our listeners could experience or remember the experience they had where they were with a, a, a friend or a former friend or a colleague and feeling that level of tension and that f- compassion. So again, as I said, compassion is empathy and action. So where empathy feels more generally like the ability to like take the perspective and understand where someone's coming from, compassion is when those feelings and thoughts include the desire for action and the desire for help. So the first person you are helping here is yourself because you're freeing yourself from this. And the second person you are helping here is your colleague because you are going to start showing up differently when you're wishing them well. And you're not going to be this like heat seeking missile of resentment. It works, my friend. Trust me. Do this. And I promise you in time, you will be free. The second listener question came from Tom. And he wanted to know if there was a thought that I could help him or tell him, I should say, to think that would switch his negative thoughts around his job. He said he's trying to stay positive in his role, but he hasn't been promoted yet. And he was promoted as previous job, but now it's been four years since he's been in this position and he hasn't been promoted. He thinks that his boss is holding back and that Yeah, sometimes he sees that his boss does cool things for him, but he feels so confused because he's like, is my boss sabotaging me? Is he just, you know, BSing me? What's happening here? Tom said he finds himself drained all the time, which leads to exhaustion. And again, hard to do the work when you're tired, exhausted, and drained. He's kind of dreading going to work each day. He says that he's trying to be more positive about work, 
and he thinks that once he be, he's going to be promoted, he knows he'll start to feel better about everything. And again, Tom, I don't know all the details, but it's understandable that if you are thinking negatively about your boss, your role, why haven't I been getting promoted, that you would feel exhaustion and tired and dread. It's totally understandable. And Tom, I wish it worked this way, meaning I wish I could give you a positive thought to think because then you could repeat it or stick it on your monitor, on your bathroom mirror, and you could just practice that thought. But me telling you what to think doesn't work. Here's why. One, because it's my thought, not yours. I have a different brain than you. You have a very glorious, beautiful brain, but my brain doesn't think like your brain does. Two, I don't know what's best for you, and I don't know what you should be thinking. And three, if I give you a thought to think, you're not going to believe it because it's my thought, not yours. How many times have you read, oh, the 10 steps to thinking positively or the 10 ways to feel better about something? And the author is giving you suggestions. Well, those are their suggestions based on their brain. It's not going to work for your brain. We got to find the way that works for you. And we have to find the way that works for you by finding a believable thought that you can believe right now, not next month, not in the future. You need a new belief now in the moment. A belief is a thought that you keep thinking. And if it's a thought that feels relatable Relatable thoughts feel possible. And if something is possible, your brain will start looking for evidence as to how it's possible. Are you with me? So just as you can equally find evidence to prove that your job, your boss, your company, the marketplace is bad, they're not going to promote you and all the things, yeah, that is easy to find that evidence. But when you practice new thoughts, you eventually start interpreting the world through that new thought or that new belief, which is kind of what we do anyway, right? When we think negative things, we then interpret the world through that negativity. And if we believe positive things, we think and interpret the world positively. You're going to go out tonight. You're going to have fun. You're going to see your friends. You're feeling really good. You're feeling good as you go into that, right? It's Sunday night, Monday morning. You're feeling dread, right? What happens? You're feeling dread, exhaustion, maybe some resentment, maybe some frustration, And guess what? You go into that job that way. So again, everything we're thinking, we interpret the world through that lens. It's almost like what I want you to do is almost like find the plot twist, right? You're watching a movie, you're reading a book, the writers are leading you one way, they're breadcrumbing you along, they're showing you evidence of something that's going to happen, and then bam, it's a plot twist. This is what we need to do with our mindsets that we can shift our thinking. So what you're thinking is creating this experience of this exhaustion, this tiredness, this dread. So if you can't 100% prove something, then it's a thought, not a fact, because you said you weren't sure if your boss was sabotaging you. Unless you can prove it, it doesn't serve you to think it's a fact. It's just your thought, meaning it's not a fact that your boss is holding you back unless you have actual evidence. So then you told me that you believe that if you got promoted, you'd gain respect, you'd feel better, things would start looking up. I'm going to ask you, is that true? Meaning, is it possible that you are wrong? Have you ever met someone who was vying for a promotion, wanted to date someone, wanted to get married, wanted to, maybe not all in the same person, (laughs) but like met someone who wants to be married, met someone who wants to move to a new home or apartment. They want this new experience because they feel that when they get that new experience, they're going to feel differently. And have you ever met someone that when they get it, they don't seem to feel or act any differently? They're still sort of in the same mindset? It's because something outside of you does not make you feel better. Only you can make yourself feel better. So Tom, to answer your questions, choosing a thought that feels relatable. And if you're coming from the thought that I never get promoted, then thinking that I have the best job ever and I always make all the money I want isn't believable or relatable to you right now. So I want you to back off a bit. What is relatable? And I know I said I can't give you a thought, but I'm going to use the thought that you already gave me. A more relatable thought might be, well, I've been promoted before and I can do it again. You start to find the evidence that that's true. And when you think a thought that is more relatable, your brain is going to shift from that state of stress or worry or anxiety to one of like maybe neutrality at first, and then maybe more curiosity of like, huh, is it possible? Your brain is going to do this naturally, and it's going to want to find the proof because 
yeah, we all have a negative bias, but the brain doesn't want to stay in that space. We want to survive. So you have to be patient with yourself because it's going to take some time. And I don't know how much time it's going to take because everybody's brain is different. So you're going to have to remind yourself of this often. And if you're beating the drum of, I'm never going to get promoted, it's going to take more than one day to make that change. Or maybe not. (laughs) So you have to come from repeating your new thoughts. It's possible I can get promoted often and frequency. So for any of my media friends, this is where you need to bring in the reach and the frequency. Say it many times a day and say it for a period of time. That practice means that you're not going to always be good at it, but you're going to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to practice this thought. And if you feel stuck, get a coach. I might know someone who can help you. (laughs) So to recap, when negative thinking pops up in this case, make sure you ask yourself, is it true? Can I prove it? Separate those thoughts from facts. And then find a thought that's relatable, something that you can believe now that feels easier to believe. And then you need to practice because it's frequency of the practice and the duration of the practice is what is going to bring you a different mindset, a different result, a shift. And when you find a thought that feels relatable and somewhat believable, can you strengthen it? Can you like up-level it? Can you exalt it in some way? Really think that through. All right, friends, before I go, I want to ask you, who are you getting your support from? I would be honored to help you with any of your career strategy, executive presence, executive coaching, any of the challenges that you're going for through. You can learn more on my website. All right, my friends, have a fabulous day. And as always, here's to possibility. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.